I'm Andy Liebner with US Ski Poles. This video is to show how to repair or make a ski pole longer, or any carbon tube for that matter, in minutes. Shall we begin? Before we begin putting the tubes together, we need to analyze what we have to make sure we've got all the parts and pieces that we need. So, um, come a little closer and I can show you just the, the bare minimum of what you need to, to do this. You need some sandpaper, you need some pieces that you can either put on the inside or the outside of the tube. You need some glue and a heat gun or a heat source. We happen to have a lot of different size carbon tubes because we're a carbon tubing factory. And so it makes it easier for us to put this together because we have a lot of different diameters to work with. So as we start, the first thing we need to do is find the, the right diameters. So this is a little wobbly, as you can see, it's not the best um, fitting tube and neither is it on this side so what I'm gonna do is add the shim part and if I take the shim and piggyback it on the smaller tube and then now try to insert that in it's a real tight fit that's gonna make a real good fitting carbon tube now I want I want also test the opposite tube that's gonna go together so once that's heated up with glue it's gonna be really solid and that's what we're looking for. Before we add glue, we need to rough the top surface up. This pole is actually painted, so I need to rough up that top surface to give the glue some adherence points. So not only do I want to do the outside, but I want to sand the inside as well. And I rolled up some sandpaper here and that gives it some points where it can grab. And I'll do the opposite to the receiving end. Okay, now that it's sanded, we can start to apply glue. So I have a heat gun here and I've got a special glue. What I wanna do is take our shim and our piggyback and once the glue changes color then the chemical formula has changed slightly to allow it to become a liquid and it was a pretty tight fit before I applied it so we know it's going to work well I'm going to push it on halfway and then let it cool. You want to make sure that this part is completely cool before you added glue to this side. That way it doesn't slide in any further. Now that it's cooled, we are going to apply glue to this end and then slide this tube on. I want to twist and rotate it so it gives it good coverage. Now to get any excess glue off, you can take the colder part of the glue stick and rotate the tube underneath it. And it should give it a nice, um, nice look. So now that both sides are cooled, I can test the pole to see how strong it is. It is quite strong. So this is, I would say, a solid, um, successful transfer. Um, if you wanted to add a little bit more strength and cover up the seam, you can take your larger diameter tube, which will fit over the tube, and then we would heat that up. Um, since we have a carbon tubing factory and we can cut these, um, you can just cut them with a hacksaw yourself at home. Um, I am going to add this smaller one right over the top a little bit. So I want to use the same glue over the top and that's why I sanded the top surface so it 
oh, will allow it to adhere a little better. And you can sand a little bit further if you wanted to, to uh, add more adhesion on the further points too. You might want to mark with a marker where you want this to end, because once you slide it over, you might not be able to see it so well. So now I want to make sure that the glue is nice and liquefied. And I'm going to slide and rotate this tube over the middle. And I can clean up those ends with some exterior heat. To encapsulate the, the rough ends, you can see some loose fibers there. I just take this, this heat gun again with some glue and rotate, put a little bead around the edge. You can clean it up later. But that, that keeps any burrs from from uh, causing any issues. So now that it's nice and liquefied, I can take the cool part of my glue stick and just run it along the edge here. And it takes away any excess. So now that it's cooled, it's nice and solid. And if I wanted to cover up this uh, middle piece that I put on here, we've included these pieces of vinyl that uh, can be easily applied. So I'm gonna put this down so I can open up the vinyl. And it has, it's a little bit longer than it needs to be. So we'll have an overlap. So I can push it straight. I don't have to worry about creases so much. This vinyl is very temperature sensitive. So when I use the heat gun, it will shrink. Okay, so I'm gonna push that these edges down. Okay, now I turn the heat gun on. I want to turn the heat gun down a little bit so I don't have as much heat. If you don't have a a regular a regulator, then um, you can use a hair dryer to go further further away from your heat source. Now, that's going to shrink the, the vinyl just a little bit and it should do away with at least the majority of these creases. you can trim them down as you see fit. So there you have it folks, less than three minutes and we can repair any size carbon tube up to two inch, any ski pole of any brand, any diameter. So if this is too troublesome, you can send us your poles or your, your parts and we will repair it for our standard $40 per pole. Or you can buy one of our repair kits and do it yourself. Thanks for watching this video. Like our YouTube page, thanks again. When you order a repair kit from our website, usskipoles.com, this is what you'll get. Um, this is the three piece. We also have a two piece. You'll get three different size diameter tubes and they're five inches long. You'll also get a shim. You can see it there. Um, there's a piece of sandpaper. There is some special glue that works specifically for carbon fiber. There's an instruction booklet and a five inch piece of vinyl if you wanted to wrap the vinyl around the pole afterwards.